Let's turn now to Florida, where the death toll still rising from Hurricane Ian. Many people remain desperate for help more than a week after the storm hit, as tens of thousands still in the dark and many others with no access to clean water. Joining us live from Fort Myers Beach uh, is NBC News correspondent Sam Brock. Sam? Yeah, Mika, good morning. The historical precedent here is pretty hard to digest. You're looking right now at 130 plus people who have lost their lives. You've got to go back, Mika, to 1935 to find a hurricane that struck Florida with a death toll that was that high or higher. Then it was over 400 people. I'm standing on a street in Fort Myers Beach. Over my shoulder, you'll see these piles of debris that are six, seven, eight feet high. There is a car underneath that just to give you some perspective we spoke recently with a mother a heartbroken mother who talked about the last conversation that she had with her daughter one of the victims in this unthinkable tragedy with emergency responders still scouring devastated neighborhoods one familiar question keeps surfacing from those who have lost everything Tell me where to go, what to do. <laughs> Those now homeless because of Hurricane Ian, worried about their next steps. As other families cope with houses that may still be standing, but are missing something even more precious that can never be replaced. What happened to your daughter? She called 911 and emergency services had already been suspended and they couldn't get here. Susan McGuire's daughter, Liz, likely suffered a blood clot at exactly the wrong time and died with a cell phone in her hand. Susan says they last spoke just hours before Ian made landfall. Oh, she always ended every conversation with, I love you. Love you, Mom. You know, love you too, sweetie. Yeah. And that's the last thing you two ever said to each other? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That grief felt by more than 130 families, with Ian now the deadliest Florida storm since 1935. Places like Sanibel Island and Pine Island have been unreachable for days, though that's improving. NBC's Jesse Kirsch is on the ground there. More than a week after Hurricane Ian cut off the only bridge onto Pine Island, traffic is moving in both directions again. But this is a temporary fix, and it's still slow going to get supplies in. Supplies that are still being flown in by helicopter. This has damaged bridges that allow rail cars to bring in critical materials like plywood and lumber remain impassable. You would see on the railroad typically in the magnitude of 80 truckloads a day come in by rail. With the recovery efforts that are needed, you can triple that number. But not now. Not now. No. Zero is coming in now. At the moment, no. It could be two months or more to replace the broken bridges, a delay that would be devastating for those hoping to start over. The railroad company tells me that they've been in touch with FEMA, also with the Florida Department of Transportation, but so far have not been able to connect directly with Governor DeSantis as they are trying to get more aid to expedite that process. Also, as far as the power situation is concerned on the ground here, some 90,000 or so people in Lee County, of course, the hardest hit area, still have no power. But 80 percent of people, remarkably, a week and a half out now, do. Mika and Joe, let me send it back to you.